Hey guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Noodles for the final review of Dance 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 Here, yeah! episode 11. Final episode, this is where I break down the final episode. What do I mark this anime out of 10? Would I recommend it to a friend if they asked? Before we get going, make sure you guys are subscribed. We are aiming to hit 1k of subscribers by the end of the year. So we can start going a bit more interactive. We can start doing some nights where you guys get involved. Big old chat. We could have a ramen evening type situation where we just sit down, eat ramen or noodles or something and just chat about anime what's airing in the season old animes because i do a lot of seasonal stuff we don't get to talk about classics we don't get to talk about what my favorite animes are because a lot of my favorites they're not airing right now they're long gone they already aired classics by this point it would be fun to do that kind of stuff with you guys so if you're not subscribed please give my channel a bit of a love hit that subscribe button let's get on to the final video and i have enjoyed breaking this anime down thank you guys so much because you guys have made last week's video the most viewed video of the entire season so so thank you. You overtook the Requiem gang and they did very, very well. I have to admit for like 22 episodes until I dropped it. They did amazing. They did great. But I carried it on because they were loyal and they wanted to hear it. But things got too much and eventually I had to just kind of walk away. But I didn't walk away of this one. I really enjoyed it. And you guys have been fantastic. So without further ado, let's talk about the final episode. We have Miyako's initial outburst to Mori telling him he sucks as they are still dancing on the beach in front of the grandmother who is a curse. Curse upon both Mori and Chizuru. We had the culmination of her being told what to do and the fact that Junpei did break up with her because of Maurice not really considering how she felt. Even with the ending I'm now leaning a bit more towards the train of thought that maybe she does actually like her cousin which is a bit awkward but we'll talk about that at the end because we'll have a proper chance to review everything. Maurice dance his final dance emotions taken over the anger the jealousy everything is starting to channel into his dance he's becoming himself he throws Junpei to the floor and Junpei just doesn't get up instead of getting up like he did on stage he doesn't Mori's rage takes over and he finally takes on the role of Rothbard angry jealous all of these feelings are allowing him to really channel that character willing that Junpei would come back but he just doesn't come back up this time this time he allows Rothbard to win and take Miyako aka Odette. Chizuru walking by at the same time is very very lucky whether she'd come to see her mother I'm not quite sure talking to the supposedly a carer maybe she went home maybe she saw the note and then that's why she's out going to see where Mori has gone and obviously she knew where Mori would go but it is very good time at this moment in time Mori is jumping in the air gaining wings becoming a true Rothbard the dance of his absolute life we have the final of one like playing out perhaps his best dance ever because he starts to realize that all he wants is recognition his grandmother's way of tutoring is all about no individuality in ballet it's all unison very similar to the elite school if you think about it the school teachers everyone has to be in sync we've seen the SS boys all in sync if anything Maury would not have enjoyed it at the SS class because Maury is now realizing that his desire is to be his own person and to realise that I am Mori. Stop looking at me as if I am my mother. I am me. He realises this because he knows it goes against her teachings. He realises this is everything that she would not have wanted. So our final leap, absolutely gorgeous, very cinematic, really liking it, really liking the colours. As sun is setting, setting on a new day, realising those dreams. True dancing really is, is bringing tears to the people who care. And we have Miyako running over. We have Chizuru literally moved to tears. Probably the best she's ever seen him dance. But it's always that sad thing as well that the grandmother is so senile by this point. She's probably got Alzheimer's. She doesn't recognise Mori as a person. She still sees her daughter. She's still clapping. Despite the fact that Mori danced Rothbert's part, not the princess's part. She didn't even notice that the variation was changed. That's why you've got him slapping the water at the end because he realises that you're never going to make headway with this woman. And that is is what you've got to come to terms with as breaking your curse moving on that is the end of a toxic relationship that you had with her Mori and Miyako Miyako running over and swearing that she's going to be by his side wants to keep seeing him dance he is the one who gave her wings he kept giving her the wings to dance the decision has been made Chizuru does come over I think the most saddest part was when she tells Junpei that you don't have to play friends anymore. You can go do your own thing. It's a family matter. This is what she wanted. She wanted to get Mori dancing, but she ended up giving up and that's why she took on Junpei in the first place. But it does feel like that's it. I've got what I wanted. He's now dancing. I don't need you anymore. So she just kind of lets him go. It does feel a little bit sad in that sense. But it is a happy ending for at least the family for now because she promises to help Mori overcome his curse. We have been cursed by the same person. Not only your grandmother who've cursed you, 
it's my mother. My mother no, didn't want anything to do with me. She walked away. She, I was Japanese. She wanted somebody who was Russian, not Japanese, abandoned by her own mother. So they've both been cursed by the same person. So they both have to deal with this and overcome it together, which is a really nice outcome. But it's, again, sad because Junpei now has to go his own separate way. And she tells him to go and like follow your gut, do what you what you need to do. Junpei now being pushed to go and make this other decision, which is a really a weird choice, but I'm happy that it worked out because if he had not worked out and let's say he hadn't been chosen for the scholarship, would he even have been allowed to return to God Eye? Because it feels like he couldn't. Would have felt like that would have been the end of the career anyway. He chooses to go back to the elite school and to dance and attempt to try getting that scholarship. Initially, we come in on the elite lady interested in the playboy who is dancing at this point. We are shown that he was offered the same role. They were both offered the scholarship. It made me realise that she really didn't intend to give Junpei the scholarship at all. And I felt this from before I, I did say last week I think that I just didn't feel like she was ever going to offer that branch to him I'm pretty sure she said don't come to the selections I'm pretty sure that's what she said she's like if you want it I'll give it to you but you just don't attend and you have to cut ties of god I remember that one him appearing was like oh okay you're appearing anyway so you're going against what she said whether she was trying to keep him away or not playboy wowing the class and admits that yes i got this far by lying but i'm going to do anything to get to the top which sets both junpei and him apart is that junpei just goes by his love for dance and his willingness to keep on going whilst this guy will resort to a bit few more underhanded means to try and get what he wants because he doesn't fully believe in his dance or he sees other people as threats acknowledges people are better and he tries to knock him out he played those mind games and those mental games with both mori and junpei by causing jealousy between them because he realised that they were both in love with the same person. And he used this to his advantage. It's just showing you the toxic levels that some people will try to get the things that they want. So nobody expected Junpei to actually make it. And when he does actually appear and her walking off was like, well, she, she never really intended to let him dance. And I did feel that. So I'm very happy that with a bit of force, Junpei really does grab hold of her and forces her back to the dance room. With a bit of force, he forces her to look at me. Like, look at me. I'm here. I've made this trip. I am soaking wet. I've run here. I'm here. I have made my decision. I'm here right now. You will look at me dance. Kudos to the pianist. The pianist is literally OP this week. She is amazing. She just goes with it. She decides to give Junpei that chance and she realizes that determination and she keeps playing. And even during a dance, when he starts to switch it up, she does it with him. She gets so swept away and she even says at the end, it's been a very long time since somebody made me feel that way with their own dancing. Which I love her to pieces and the fact that she was quite comforting to him initially and gave him a few hints like, what did you actually want? You know, what are you trying to achieve? I like her. She's a great character and I think she's a right inspiration to Junpei. Junpei, his dancing is full of errors. He's a bad dancer, but he is captivating, always captivating, always putting his all into it. And he's just a beginner, which is the most scary part. He is dancing for an adept who is no more. She is gone. Playing upon his real emotions, his real feelings, a bit of method acting. Sees his princess and he no longer has that princess, but he wants to convey his emotions of how happy he was and then how sad he was when he lost her. So he's able to portray happy prince and sad prince because bear in mind the prince ends up losing in the end. Junpei slipping partway through, I knew it would happen. I knew something had to go wrong. Generally, something in sports animes, normally something goes wrong and the guys have to bounce back. I was expecting something. I knew there wouldn't be a clean dance. And obviously, he slips on the rainwater. He still just tries. And this is the moment where he thinks about Odette and Rothbert taking Odette away. And that is when we see Miyako as the black swan, finally, as Adele. And it's great to see her playing both roles because now that she's gone, it's great just to see the story of Swan lake being intertwined with this anime plot and seeing both characters relating to different characters in that show the most important thing i think this show is trying to tell anybody is get back up junpei gets back up despite slipping and i believe that this can be applied to any character in the plot don't give up get back up keep going i think that is the anime's moral and he ends up moving his class and we do see the playboy starting to sweat because he can realise that he hasn't wiped out his competitor and his competitor is right here. And despite all those flaws, and he can see those flaws, he knows that Junpei's going to get it. In a sense, means that he can see how good he is, despite the fact that he refuses to clap. He doesn't clap for Junpei, but he can acknowledge, yeah, I realise that you're a threat. You're going to beat me. I'm worried. I really love the line that talent is cruel because Junpei can captivate an entire audience after a few months. And those who have been learning since they're tiny, 
they may never even get to have that same effect. They may never captivate people. Talent can be cruel. Sometimes it just chooses people and they can just be gifted in it. The name totally escapes me, but the daughter of the elite lady. I do wonder if she's going to be a possible love interest because now Junpei hasn't got a love interest anymore. But he did see her on the balcony and I think that's something that did sway him to really want to dance here and he really enjoyed dancing with her. I wonder. I'm not quite sure. Again, we don't know if we're going to get a season two or anything. She recognises he's a great dancer and I love that and she recognises that even from the festival, from the festival, he inspired her. I love the fact that she comes bounding over to him at the end and she's smiling and actually happy. I like this. Maybe there is hope for Junpei down the line somewhere, even if it's not with Miyako, which is going to be quite sad too. But above all odds, Junpei comes out, heads above the rest. He ends up getting that scholarship, seized all contact with Godai, and he's agreed to remove his ego, you know, get rid of it, sacrifice it. One, Maybe it's sacrificing a part of himself and begs that please whip me into shape in your methods. He is humbled in a sense. He comes on humbled and he realises that how much he loves classical ballet and he doesn't understand what contemporary or ballet really actually is. She admits, you know, I recognise you've got potential. So she does actually acknowledge him. But then again, that's when she goes, you have to cut ties with Godai. You've got to make your choice it's one way or the other. And I don't think he would have been allowed back at Godai anyway. So I do feel like it was a make or break at this point. Like if you didn't make this class, you probably wouldn't be dancing back with them because you're simply a distraction to Mori and Miyako, which is quite sad. I feel like he had to pass this regardless. The path to the SS class has now been cleared. He's now got a route into ballet and this is a really honourable, amazing position that he's got. He must be like one of the first few people in a few months to achieve that kind of status. I do wonder if the daughter of the tutor is going to be a possible new interest for him later down the line. I think she's really young, so that has to be something that they build into. But then again, we've got cousin love, perhaps, so who knows? The show's motto at the end with the Playboy is repeated, just don't give up. He's like, my dad might force me to quit, but it's just don't give up. And I think this applies to all the characters. I think it's a great motto. I really like it. Ending. The ending is one of those ones where I feel like it's happy with a note of sadness to it because we see Mori and Mirko happily dancing and she looks very, very happy. They're at Godot. Happy ending perhaps there. We see Junpei happily dancing freely and in the streets and very, very happy towards his SS class, going towards his happy, happy sunset just accepted those two are together and I don't know how I feel because I definitely don't want to see a relationship but at the same time it feels like the anime is lifting towards it. At the same time I didn't come to this anime expecting a romance. Let's go into my scoring now that we've broken down the final episode. I am crowning dance 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 yeah 7.2 out of 10. I couldn't round it up. I've decided that I'm going to stop rounding. I'm actually going to stop rounding and give you the exact percentages. On Mal, it's probably going to get a 7, but 7.2 would be my score because a 7 for me is a good score. It's a nice solid score. Going into it expecting a low bar, but getting a really high result because this is Mappa. The anime looks gorgeous. We can't fault how good this anime looks. There are some frames that look absolutely gorgeous. So the anime looks great. The plot for me was very, very interesting. I went into this this anime expecting ballet. Didn't expect the love interest stuff so I can understand why that has plummeted a lot of people's scores. It told me a lot about male ballet. Stuff that I didn't even realise before. It gave me a look into the world of ballet elitism as well. We start to explore some of the toxic elite beliefs at the top and we see a lot of very complicated toxic relationships with parental figures and I like that. I think the anime does a great job at exploring those darker aspects. I cried when we found out about Mori and his abusive backstory. Mori still was one of my favourite characters but Perhaps until the final few episodes. I loved him as a character. He was my favourite until about the end. And then it might have just shifted to I like everyone equally. I don't think I have an overall favourite anymore. But I really enjoyed both the characters. I can understand why people weren't a big fan of certain aspects. But if I have to say, did it do what I was expecting when I first went in? Expecting an anime, sport anime? Yes. The romance element for me was needed but unneeded. I feel like it was just a motivation to show Junpei dancing and then getting him into dance because he falls in love with Miyako and then she teases him into the studio kind of thing. I feel like it's a great hook. Now that you've introduced the relationship aspect, I want to see them together, which is really irritating. But at the same time, it's not what we're here for. That's not what we're here. I'm going to treat this a bit like Chihaya Fura, one of my favourite animes out there. I don't remember what the cards are called because it's been a very long time since anything aired in that anime whatsoever. It's about those cards where you have to call out the second line. It will come to me later down the line. I'll be screaming it and going, no, God damn it, I've already edited it. Good anime. If you haven't watched that anime, go check it out. That's got a very mixed up relationship aspect to it too because it's two guys and there's a girl and they grow up and one goes away to become elite. The other guy is a bit rough around the edges and there's this will they, won't they 
love triangle thing going on. I normally give a recommendation, go check out Jahaya Furo. I love that anime. There's like five seasons of it. I really hope we get a second season for this. As of this moment in time of recording, there is no second season for Dance 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 You, but I am aware the, the manga goes way past. So there's a lot of manga that could be done into a second season, which would be nice to get a encore. You could call it Dance 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 You. Oh, cool. The mapper. Y you want me to say that that every single week. You want me to bore my viewers by going dance, 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 yeah. Encore. You want it to happen. You know you want it to happen. I had fun with this anime. I actually really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people didn't, but I don't care. This is Becca's breakdown. My breakdown is 7.2. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Really would recommend it to a friend who was asking for filler, something to look out for whilst they're waiting for the seasons to change over. Segway, I have got my lists ready. I am ready to start recording summer 2022. What is coming your way? And I can say a lot of it is sequels. So you better have seen the first seasons, guys. I want to see you there on my channel in about five weeks. So make sure you're there. Be there. Be square. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in every single week and supporting me. I had so much fun. I like this anime. You guys also liked it. Well, last week's episode broke my records for the seasons. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have enjoyed my little breakdowns. Have a good day, guys. And I will hopefully see you in another anime breakdown soon. Bye-bye, guys.